Hey, what's up YouTube? In today's video, I'm once again going to talk about interactive foliage. In the last video, I made a brief tour of all the solutions I've explored in the past and the one solution I'm currently exploring, a strand-based GPU solution. And to my surprise, one of the solutions I've previously explored made a lot of noise on Twitter, so I thought it'd be a good idea to walk you through the implementation and show you how it's done. To put it simply, this technique swaps nearby static mesh instances with individual skeletal meshes. Then at a distance, it cancels the skeletal animation to seamlessly swap back skeletal meshes with static instances. Now for the pros and cons of this technique, please watch the last video. I'll try to keep this one somewhat short, so let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Alright, the first and most tedious step is to set up the skeletal mesh and rigid bodies. So I modeled a very simple mesh in Blender and then rigged it using an armature and white painting. Nothing fancy. I imported the mesh into UE using FBX and then proceeded to set up the physics asset. That's the most annoying part. Forget to tick one checkbox and the simulation explodes. Plus, there are a lot of manual steps involved. Now what you may want to do first is start fresh. Depending on the bone size slash volume, UE may have automatically created rigid bodies for some bones, but yeah, I usually prefer to start fresh. So first I worked on the stem. Mine is built of four bones, so I created four capsule bodies. I'm fast forwarding a bit here. You just have to create a capsule for each bone, make sure they are not overlapping, that they have the appropriate position, length and radius. I also created a box for the root bone. Next, rigid bodies settings. First, I prefer to force set a mass and prevent UE to derive one from the rigid bodies volumes. Next, I found that adding linear and angular dumping to be quite important. I also disabled gravity. The way I see it, this asset's rest pose already has gravity embedded into it, if that makes sense. Leaves are already bent and whatnot, so it doesn't make sense to further add weight onto them. I only want the physics bodies to solve the physical interaction with my character, right? Next, all bodies were set to simulated but the root body. That one I set to kinematic. That's what allows the foliage asset to remain grounded, okay? Next, the center of mass of each body could be offset to further tweak the simulation. Up to you. Sleep settings have no purpose though, because I don't rely on rigid bodies being awake or asleep to drive any logic, since it's a bit broken, I think. I mean, it works unless you set one rigid body to kinematic. At that point, this function always returns true for some reasons. Could be by design or a bug, I don't know. But it's alright, I'm using a more robust solution anyway. I then repeated this step to add rigid bodies to all bones, and that's pretty much it. So it's all about tweaking the rigid body's sizes, making sure they are correctly located, and that they do not overlap each other. Next, constraints. You may select two rigid bodies, right-click, and choose constraints selected bodies. You can choose to show or hide bodies and constraints, by the way. Repeat that step for each pair of rigid bodies. Maybe double-check constraints are properly located, but that's pretty much it. I then disabled collision on all constraints to allow constraint bodies to overlap. That definitely helped to get a stable simulation. Linear limits were set to locked because bodies should only be able to rotate and not be translated. Speaking of rotation, angular limits. Hmm. Using limited or locked resulted in nothing but a simulation that exploded in all kinds of very interesting ways. So I had to work with free constraints. Next, I set up angular motors, and that's pretty much it. Fine-tune these settings, the rigid body's masses, sizes, linear and angular damping, and so on and so forth, and you should end up with a desired result. Although it's not as easy as it sounds. I definitely couldn't get a simulation that feels very rigid and stiff, plus I have an issue with the root body not handling its locked position constraint very well, as you can see. So, meh, it's for sure a bit finicky to fine-tune. There are probably settings related to chaos that you could tweak to improve things, simulation substepping and whatnot, I don't know. It's certainly not my area of expertise. By the way, you may click on simulate and hold Control right click to affect bodies and see how it behaves. Cool. That's it for the skeletal mesh. Next, static mesh instances. So to have a static mesh asset to work with, I exported from Blender the same asset but without the armature. 
Next, just have to enter the foliage mode, drag the static mesh asset here, paint instances, and voila. Also, make sure your collision is rightfully configured to allow the pen brush to trace against your geometry, landscape, or whatever. But yeah, there's not a lot to that step. Now for the blueprint side of things. It's fortunately nothing too complex, but keep in mind that the method I'm showing you today works, but is not scalable. And I think it's important to understand why. You see, there's one big technical challenge that comes with this kind of system, and it's always the same thing. Spatial queries, aka getting the list of instances around your character. Unreal Engine offers a solution, but it's a brute force method. Let me explain. In my pawn blueprint, I call a function using a timer. That's to avoid using tick and to save a bit of CPU performance. In that function, I first get all instance foliage actors in the scene. Next, for each foliage instance static mesh component each actor has, I check if that pawn is inside this component's bounds. If so, I get all instance overlapping a sphere, and for each instance, I first spawn a blueprint actor using that instance world transform, and then I remove that instance. That's the logic that swaps static instances with skeletal meshes, okay? So that blueprint actor just owns a skeletal mesh component, the foliage asset we just set up, right? It's configured to simulate physics, but there are also a few tweaks to do in the collision profile, but more on that in a minute. Now that blueprint has an instance static mesh component variable that is exposed on spawn to keep track of the component owning the instance that has just been swapped with that actor, if that makes sense. That way, when I periodically check if that actor is distant enough to the camera to be swapped back with a static instance, well, I can simply get that instance component and add an instance to it using this actor's transform before destroying the actor. And that's the logic that swaps skeletal meshes back with static instances. Now, I have a couple of things to say here. First, again, like I said earlier, this won't scale well at all. This is a brute force method, right? I loop through all foliage actors, then through all static mesh components, hopefully most of them are rejected with that box test, and then this function does a squared distance check for each instance in that component. Now I think the foliage mode is somewhat smart, and splits foliage instances into multiple instance static mesh components, depending on some kind of cluster world size or instance count, I'm not entirely sure actually, I'd have to double check. What I'm trying to say is, this is unlikely to scale horribly, I think. But still, this way of doing things, at least on paper, isn't great. Especially considering you kinda have to tick this. Maybe not at a high rate, but still. So this is unlikely to work well for a large open world, right? You get my point. You'd likely require some kind of acceleration structure at this point. A grid, a BVH tree or something to speed up the nearest instance queries. Second, spawning and deleting skeletal actors at a regular interval is likely to add a lot of stress on several parts of the engine. Lots of actors to be garbage collected, lots of components to be initiated upon actor spawn, lots of rigid bodies to be registered and so on and so forth. Ideally, I think you'd want to pre-spawn a bunch of skeletal actors, keep them hidden somewhere under the world or something, and keep a list of which skeletal actor is free to be swapped with a static instance, or something alike. Third, deleting and adding static instances is likely going to add a bit of stress on the CPU and memory as well. That is likely going to reallocate a bunch of memory, copy arrays around and so on. I'm not exactly sure to be honest, but I'm pretty confident a better solution would be to hide the instance instead of removing it. Maybe collapse vertices onto the instance position using per instance custom data or something. So yeah, game dev, you know. A basic implementation like this is super simple to set up, but a proper implementation that can be efficiently scaled up is a lot more complicated, as usual. Still, this simple system could do the job well enough for some small indie projects, if you know the constraint you're working with and know what you're doing. Fourth and final point, I've been suggested to use lightweight instances instead, because supposedly this kind of swap in and out instances is precisely why the lightweight instancing system was built for. It's a feature that flew a bit under the radar, something that got introduced in 5.0 I think, but after having taken a look, well, I don't agree at all. Let me explain. First, my system is plug and play and works great with the foliage mode. Paint some foliage, press play, and voila, it works. 
Lightweight instances, however, oof. Now I'm new to it, so I might be missing something, but so far the workflow seems to be atrocious, sorry. Lightweight instances first need to be converted from actors to lightweight instances to be referenced in a manager. So there's a manager base class that doesn't support any form of rendering at all, and then one that seems to expect a static mesh actor to work with. So let's try. Drag that static mesh in the scene, duplicate it once or twice, Convert to lightweight instances and they are gone. That created a manager though, and it does indeed list the instances. But then it has no instance static mesh component to draw them, so I'm not sure what's going on here. So let's try something else. Let's create a manager blueprint. Represented class that be my blueprint that has a skeletal mesh component that be drawn as a static instance unless interacted with, right? Let's also configure its instance component to use the correct mesh. So let's try adding that manager to the scene, add a bunch of blueprints, convert to lightweight instances, and boom, they are gone. And they are not even listed in the manager, great. So maybe try adding an instance manually, that doesn't do anything, okay? So maybe add an instance to the instance component directly. And yeah, that works. But then I'm pretty sure that's really not what you're supposed to do. Plus, let's assume it would work. There's no foliage paint tool for this, right? So I suppose I could paint instances and then copy the transform buffer, but that's awful. But even then, what would I do with this? A lightweight instance manager comes with almost no function at all, except that one. So what would drive the instance swap logic, right? I don't even have a way to get a list of nearby instances. Well, I do. I could get its instance static mesh component and call this function, but then I'm back to square one. Same thing I did before, right? So yeah, considering my swap system is just this plus that, I really don't see the benefit of using lightweight instances here. It wouldn't be able to solve any of my bottlenecks anyway. Bottlenecks being the nearest instance queries and the CPU-driven rigid body simulation. So yeah, I'm going to stick with the old way of doing things. I'd be happy if you could prove me wrong though. Let me know in the comments below if you think I missed something. Anyway, that's the technical details and challenges to keep in mind when working with such a foliage interaction system. It's nothing too complex, but the devil lies in the details, as usual. Speaking of detail, one more thing. You see, at first I tried to wait for the skeletal mesh to be back to its rest pose to trigger the swap with the static mesh instance. So I tried to rely on physic bodies being all asleep to trigger the swap, but that proved to be not working, like I explained earlier. But that's alright, because that's not such a great idea anyway. The physics simulation may need a lot of time to settle, so you can't really control the amount of simulated instances. Keep in mind that this can be a very costly way to simulate foliage, so you really want to limit the amount of instances being simulated at a given time. So to ensure this, I just rely on the distance to the camera to swap skeletal actors with static instances. But that means that a distant skeletal instance, still being simulated, wobbling and whatnot, may be swapped with a static instance, resulting in an unpleasant visible hitch. So to solve this, I simply fade out the skeletal animation at a distance. And that's very efficiently done in the vertex shader. This setup recreates the world position and the normal intention space a vertex has before the skeletal animation. So it's interpolated based on the distance to the camera, and if done properly, that ensures skeletal instances look no different than static instances when the swap happens. See that debug view? Bones are still moving, yet the mesh slowly goes static based on distance. And that's it. That's how it works. Well, almost. Unreal Engine's great character movement component is built to react to physical interactions. Be slowed when you're pushing a physically simulated object and things like that. Something you'd want, most of the time I suppose, but probably not when pushing a bunch of leaves around. No, I'm not entirely confident the method I'm about to show you is the best one, but it works. First, I created a specific object channel for foliage assets. So that skeletal mesh component is configured to be of object type foliage, 
and it can be blocked by objects of type pawn and that type only, and collision must be enabled for physics to be simulated. Next in the character blueprint, I ensure the main capsule component cannot be blocked by foliage objects. That allows me to breathe through foliage, right? And the trick is then to add another capsule and make that capsule collide with nothing but foliage assets. The character movement component is coded to only listen to hit events from the main capsule to affect the movement logic, right? So this second capsule is ignored, at least regarding movement. It's still however going to affect foliage objects and that's how I can freely move through foliage yet interact with it. Now to allow other characters or even objects to interact with foliage, you need to have them trigger a swap as well. But then that skeletal animation fed out by distance mechanism is kinda based on your own POV, so that wouldn't necessarily work. So yeah, again this is a simple implementation, up to you to iterate upon it. Game dev is hard, who knew? Voila, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you found the video helpful. Files are available as a tier 2 reward on my Patreon, so feel free to join in to get access to all kinds of educational projects and demos. Thanks by the way to all my patrons for the incredible support, yours best. Alright, see you in the next video, in the meantime take care of yourself, bye bye!